Good morning and welcome to the news desk here on the Joy News Channel. We're coming to you live from our studio here in Coco Mlemle. We're live on DSTV Channel 421 and GoTV Channel 144. Coming up in this edition, Accra Metropolitan Assembly battles with sanitation needs of Agbogloshi traders as heaps of garbage are left unattended to for a number of days. Now, the Ghana Health Services this morning placing the public on a health alert on increasing cases of rabies being recorded in the Ashanti region. So far, deaths have been recorded from four cases detected in three districts in the region. And on childhood cancers, threatening the lives of Ghana's future leaders, how can it be dealt with? We hear from the medical expert as they share some positive news with us on treatment and management. Details plus business and sports all coming up in this bulletin. Remember, we are also live on the Joy Prime channel. My name is Samuel Kojo Gray. Stay with us for details. Now, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly has admitted it has challenges meeting the sanitation needs of the Agbobloshi market. Ghana's market centers, including the Abu Bloshi, have been notoriously uh, known for being filthy. The assembly says it is only able to collect 40% of the waste generated by the hundreds of vendors and customers each day. Nevertheless, the AMA says its target is to make the market one of the cleanest in the greater Accra region as it plans to make what cleanup exercise day on Saturday, September 17, 2022. Michael Ashley has more in the following report. In the Agbobloshi market, one of Accra's biggest and most patronized markets. But right away, it hits you. The issue of waste management appears as one of its biggest challenges, managing waste. Everywhere you pass, you are met with waste in the drains, crawling from all crevices. So we asked some of the traders here, what really is the problem? I go more now we are in here. See your doors. More now we are in here. Book out what me up right now. What was the answer? We clean our surroundings as often as we can. The problem is where to dump the waste. The bin is not big enough. Also, some people dump their waste on the streets at night, and we are tired of complaining. If we get more beans, we can make this market clean. The government sanctioned waste collectors don't come around as often as we would want them to. Two million children or sister coin. Enti yesu yeye hu ejuma. Ade ewo ho ni se ya ye wo gola bol gota no no mu fi se na ye ye. We are sometimes insulted when we complain to those who litter the market. So I have stopped. We sometimes have to pay other people to collect the waste and that is not helping. So let's ask the AMA how much waste is actually generated from this particular market. How much of it again are they able to collect? Gordon in Korea is the Deho with the AMA. And yes, 24 tons daily that they generate. Yeah, but the contractor has placed... Uh... Before you go to what we have here, 24 tons, I mean... In, in, I mean, make it practical for us. Yes, How like I said, 24 tons, and that is two compaction trucks. Each compaction truck is 12 tons. So daily is two compaction trucks that are taking the weight. How much volume they generate a day? A day. Now, how much of it do we, are we able to collect? Yeah, for now, if you look at the skip container that are there, it is, there are two. That is uh, five tons. Yeah, so daily uh, they, they, they collect uh, 10 tons. Yes. That, that, that will leave in excess of about 12, 14 tons? Yes. 14 tons to, to be collected. Yes. I, I assume that that really gets back into the drains that you also complain about and on the street. How do you intend to collect those ones? Yes, that is why we are sensitizing the, the traders. So that at least where they do their trade, they should, at the end of the day, the waste they, they generate, they should take it to the container side, not into the drainage. You understand? Gordon says the AMA is planning to cure the indiscriminate disposal of waste starting with a cleanup exercise. On uh, Saturday, Saturday is going to be well cleanup day. So we at AMA are going to uh, use Agogloshi as the, the centre of our uh, uh, cleanup exercise. Yeah, so AMA, we are going to do our cleanup well, cleanup day in Agogloshi. Yes. 
and everybody is supposed to be here? Yes. All the, that's why we are uh, educating and sensitizing the traders, so that on that day, no one will be doing what? Trading. They will all come out in their numbers to help us at least collect uh, the, the, the refuse. We are desilt and then take it to the uh, central point. With the use of information vans, the AMA hopes to get the support of traders within the market to help clean it up on the day that is set aside as the World Cleanup Day. But what if I decide not to partake in this particular exercise? Is it possible that I can abstain? Why is it even compulsory in the first place? We will ask George Lawson, he is with the uh, AMA as well as a District Environmental Health Officer. Uh, Lawson, in terms of the law, uh, can someone say that I, I won't be part of this? No, you cannot say you cannot be part of it because uh, the AMA communal labor bylaw stipulate that everybody, any able body must take part in it. Now, if you fail to take part in it, we are going to prosecute you, we will take you to court. And you, you may be sentenced to a hundred penalty unit, meaning that's one penalty unit is uh, 12 cities. That's amount to 1,002 Ghana City or three months imprisonment. We have made provision for equipment. The compassion truck will come around. So once the refuse is gathered, the, the trucks will come and collect them. On Saturday, September 17, the AMA hopes that the traders would rally behind it to clean up our globalization market and realize his dream of becoming one of the cleanest markets in the greater Accra region. For Joy News, Michael. Ashali. Now, the Ghana Health Service says medication practices and errors remain a challenge to patient safety. A situation they said has worsened during the period of COVID-19 pandemic. The Deputy Director of Service, Dr. Anthony Adolfo Fosu, speaking on behalf of the Director General, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaje, at the 4th National Patient Safety and Healthcare Quality Conference in Xinyai, said urgent actions are therefore needed to help reduce the medication-related harms to safeguard the safety of patients. Precious Semovo has more. The 4th National Patient Safety and Healthcare Quality Conference ongoing in Sunyane is under the theme Advancing Patient Safety and Healthcare Quality During Public Health Emergencies. The three-day conference is to help health stakeholders create national awareness of patient safety and healthcare quality in the era of a public health emergency, propose a mechanism for the provision of service delivery, and identify policy and research gaps in patient safety and healthcare quality in Ghana, among others. In his address, the Deputy Director of the Ghana Health Services, Dr. Antonio Adolfo Fosu, on behalf of the Director General, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaje, said urgent actions are needed to arrest the growing medication errors affecting patient safety. Medication errors occur when weak medication systems and human factors such as fatigue, poor environmental conditions or staff shortages affect prescribing, transcribing, dispensing, administration, and monitoring practices which can then result in severe patient harm. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has significantly exacerbated the risk of medication error and associated medication-related harm, especially from self-medication. This calls for urgent action for reducing medication-related harm through strengthening systems and practices of medication use and strong partnerships with patients, their families, and communities. Ghana Health Service Council Chairman Dr. Sifa Bediakun, on his part, said the council would continue to reinforce medical governance and collaborate with other stakeholders to ensure the delivery of quality health care services. The council is making frantic efforts to reinforce clinical governance at all levels of care. This, we believe, will go a long way towards creating an environment where safety practices regarding the use of safe medications will flourish. Reducing preventable harm requires a considered, persistent, coordinated effort by all stakeholders. The council pledges his support and that the entire service 
to collaborate with all stakeholders to deliver quality health care to all citizens. Deputy Minister of Health Mahama Saini assured that the government would continue to promote pro-poor policies and interventions to benefit all citizens and urged all stakeholders to do more to improve health care safety. In Ghana, that's why many efforts, there is still the need to continuously deploy effective community policy tools, standards and protocols to equip managers and service providers at all levels of care to achieve high quality care. Precious Summer for Joy News, Sunyane. Now, let's just stay with the health sector because the Ghana Health Service has issued a health alert on increasing cases of rabies being recorded in the Ashanti region. A statement signed by the Ashanti Regional Health Director, Dr. Imano Tinkran, said death have been recorded from four cases detected in three districts in the Ashanti region. They include the Ashanti Akim South, Bosom Tree, and Kwabre East. We'll hear from an official with the Ghana Veterinary Service shortly, but first, here is the alert released by the Ashanti Region Health Directory. Now, it says that uh, the Regional Health Directory brings to the notice of all health facilities a rise in confirmed outbreak of rabies uh, cases and death in three districts in the Ashanti Region. As of Monday, 12 September 2022, the region had recorded a total of four confirmed cases and one probable case. The cases were reported from Asantia Kim South, Bosom Tree, and Kwabre East. The case fatality rate was 100%. Public health actions to be undertaken are one, enhanced community and public sensitization on rabies, two, improve case search for rabies in the facilities, three, follow up and treat all cases of dog bite, and four, liaise with veterinary officers in your district for dog vaccination. Uh, activities. It says the case uh, definition of human rabies. Suspected case is a person with one or more of the following headache, neck pain, nausea, fever, uh, fear of uh, uh, water, uh, anxiety, agitation, abnormal uh, tingling sensation, or palm at the uh, at, or pain at the wound site when contact uh, with a rabid animal is suspected. Confirmed case. Uh, so what, 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 what uh, informs, or what can you say is a confirmed case? It says that a, sus a suspected case that is uh, laboratory confirmed. So when there's a suspected case and the laboratory confirms that this is rabies, that's when you can say that indeed you have confirmed the case for rabies. It's signed by Dr. Emmanuel Tunkran, who is the regional director of health services. Now, the Ashanti region has in some years been battling with rabies. This prompted a hotline documentary dubbed Deadly Pet, produced by Seth Kwame Boateng, to intensify education and awareness about the health threat. Here's an excerpt from that hotline documentary. Now, joining us on Zoom uh, for more deliberation on this is Dr. Benjamin Kisi Sasu, a risk communication and mobilization officer with the Ghana Veterinary Service. Doc, thank you so much for your time here. Now, what's influencing the rise in the cases in the Ashanti region, as it's reported? Yes. Before we come to that, it's so fortunate that September, which has been noted as Rabies Awareness Month in Ghana, which next week, 21st Wednesday, there will be a, a, a press briefing on that by the Joint uh, Ministry, who are into one level. Um, why are we doing that? Every 28th September, all, all over the world, is World Rabies Day. Mm. And just in September, a few more days to the celebration and in Ghana, we are eating this rice. This comes to the call of all agencies who are involved in these things need to really step up our game. Ghana has committed that by 2030, we should end with this in um, Ghana. All over the world, many countries have committed to that. And the question becomes how far we are. And I'm so sad that just maybe a short space just in Ashanti region, three different districts, and this is coming up. So immediately this thing came up, um, and it has been confirmed at the human side. Quickly, uh, the veterinary service also in the region are also going to do a lot of sanitization, be part of the investigation on the ground to see how did the person come across. Because normally in our, in our literature or by um, uh, previous cases, we have realized that this is from 
the dog mediated by it. So quickly, I think the team uh, started. Yesterday, I was in touch with the regional veterinary officer and their team is joining the Ghana Health Service to ascertain how these, these three cases happened for these humans to get it and quickly see where they, they, they send it. As we do so, we would also encourage every pet owner to quickly take his vaccination book and check for the date for the rims vaccination and take advantage of this September. If you have forgotten, quickly uh, get the nearest uh, veterinary center or get a vet to come and do the vaccination. For rims vaccination, every year as a pet owner, you need to make sure your pets are vaccinated against rabies, whether being cats, dogs, and even monkeys, and we should do so. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to add, for rabies cases, once once the person starts to show signs, we call it hundred hundred percent fatal. There's no there's no cure. Nothing could be done about it, but it is hundred percent vaccine preventable. What does it mean? It means that if everybody keeping it is or a pet, make sure the pets are vaccinated. They won't have these disease for them to suffer and affect uh, humans and for humans to also be lives be in danger. Mm -hmm. It's so sad that it, can, it is a situation whereby we call it it's a zoonotic disease coming from animal, whereby we, loo we lose both the animal of, and of human. By the value, we all know human lives really, really so important that we always uh, get panic when such cases mm -hmm. come in. And if you have realized, the joiners have done a good job with Seth Kwame Watson's documentary that was done some years ago, which always every year you put do well in the month of September to sensitize people about rabies. People still think rabies are around because they have, they have not seen a victim closer by or they have not had people uh, die of it that closer. In my course of work, I've met people from time to time who tell you about how um, you saw people dying, just a health personnel. I met families that lost their beloved and they tell me that it's a shameful death. Because even the animals, people say, why do when animals get rabies, they bite their owner? It's because rabies affect the nervous system, which affects the mental uh, system, which means the way of movement, how they think and do things become different. So even you, the owner who was good to them, now become enemy because okay. of the failure. So, so no, Doc, sure we, the we are Doc. yet to ascertain the cause uh, or the causes of the four cases we recorded, right? Yes, because investigation has begun to see where, whether uh, dog bite cases were related, then they have also check. The veterinarian will come to check what the animals involved. We we'll have to put in measures if they have to be a quarantine, new quarantine. If those places are in the district right now, there will be a lot of sensitization going on uh, right now to make sure that people become careful. If there are stray dogs around, to all needs to be checked. Was it from a stray dog? Was it from uh, somebody who is keeping his own house with shelter provided with dogs? And we also want to check. You know, there's influence on bats. But, but in the country, we know all the bad uh, points in the country. So in this case, it can wildlife also be involved to see whether it was transferred from the wild um, to maybe the dog, which was, which was somebody's house, and maybe at night, and the person and the dog also got the human infected. And that doesn't work. It's only bite. It's a scratch. Which most cases, people, when they get a scratch from a dog, uh, may not uh, take a critical look at it. May not take a critical look at it. So as we, we are daily lives, we should make sure that when we go to people's house, we need to be careful unless we know our dog that is, these dogs are vaccinated. When a dog is well cared for, given a necessary shelter, vaccinated, no problem at all. Okay. But we still like to promote that. Whenever you finish handling dogs, you still need to wash your hands. You don't know, you may have a braided skin. Mm -hmm. You may mm -hmm. have a pad, a sore, or some few things that you may not know. And, you know, I was, uh, remember that we have, we make a mistake of taking your fingers closer to your eyes or through your nose, and these are ways that you could get. Okay. The rabies also um, spread to those with the parts. So if it is uh, lower your waist, it takes a long time before the effect shows. If it is upper, your hand going it's closer to your brain, because those are the nervous system, and those are things. Then you can also deal with the fluid. So if uh, you get the fluid of any rabid dog, whether it's the saliva, or uh, the blood, or the urine, all those things are ways of me getting it. But when we talk about rabies, we always want to let people know that doesn't mean we should hate dogs because we are humans. We understand. We just need to play our role world to be a responsible owner and they will be free. So we don't put fear. And we need to obey people's... Um, when you get to post house and they say they have dogs, you need to make sure they get their dogs well protect, uh, protected before you enter so you are safe. Okay. 
Okay. So we'll continue to tell the public that please check your vaccination card of your pet and take them this, this amount of uh, rabies. Some places will be lucky to have a free rabies vaccination. Some will have this subsidized. Some will have to pay for it. But it's cheaper compared to the human. Because right now, if somebody gets a dog bite and we put a, a dog under quarantine and the veterinary uh, right to know that there is, it's a serious case. So the human needs to give uh, give uh, some treatment or medication okay. or therapy. All right, the vaccine, dog. Um... Uh, we the statement was not too clear as to how many deaths have been recorded. It only said death and cases. So, how many deaths have been recorded from these cases? So, I, as I told you yesterday, we spoke to them to ascertain the number of uh, cases. There have been some kind of death. So, they are trying to finish running the samples at the Ross lab, be conf have it confirmed because sometimes. Like COVID case, when it happens, some will be analyzing issues, some may be something was depicting, but it wasn't so. So don't be clear, and later we come out. As I said, next Wednesday, already, even not this case, there's going to be Ghana House, there's going okay. to be a service, not more. We're going to sit down to have a press briefing to allow the press to ask questions about this and also about what will be about and how Ghana we are getting prepared to end with 2030. All right. So let us spread the news uh, as, as, uh, as good friends, let us tell our friends our loved ones, because when it happens, it can happen to anyone. This is not such a region. We don't know what else we come in Agra or wherever we have ourselves. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Benjamin Kisi Sasu is a communication and mobilization officer with the Ghana Veterinary Service there. Rabies can kill in case you missed that. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. So welcome back from the break. Now, cancer continues to threaten the lives of children, leaving many families with questions regarding when, how, and where to secure the best treatment. The good news is that some children are surviving the deadly health condition in Ghana. There are, however, many others who die from the ailment as a result of ignorance, late detection, and treatment. Well, so how can we change the situation the Accra Sankofa Leo Club, in partnership with the Kolebu Cancer Unit, are leading an awareness creation project to help improve the situation in Ghana. I have with me a medical practitioner, Dr. Yvonne um, Addo, um, who is with the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. She is a pediatrician and pediatric oncologist in training. Um, I also have with me a mother, Mrs. Marianne Opoku. So uh, she is a mother to a survivor. Welcome, ladies, to join us. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, let me start with you, Marian Opokun, because you, ha you have a, a child who has survived this. Um, your son survived cancer. Describe for us what you saw and uh, also how you came to know about that particular cancer. Okay, because it's television, I want to make it very short. Okay. So a child is growing very healthily. And um, all of a sudden, you begin to see that he's unwell. Anytime he eats, he says, Mommy, my tummy is hurting. Mm -hmm. To a point that he now begins to show signs of withdrawal, you know, not wanting to eat, loss of appetite, always wanting to be by himself. So um, initially, I took him to the hospital. The first time I took him, they said he was okay. Then one night I was praying, there were no lights, but I could tell from the bed that he kept turning. So I thought that he wanted to pass urine. So I took him to the washroom. In the process of urinating, the Lord opened my eyes because the place was dark. Okay. The Lord opened my eyes and I saw that he was urinating blood. So I did not flush the urine okay. afterwards. So I waited till morning. Then lo and behold, when I went in in the morning, it was blood. So from that morning, I kept monitoring him to see if I would see blood. He didn't pass any urine that contained blood. But after two days, I realized he was so uncomfortable. So I decided to take him to the hospital mm. to tell the doctors that this is what I've seen and something might be wrong with him. And judging from a two and a half year old boy,
who was, you know, I dressed him up in his jeans and his trainers and his nice shirts. He was a cute boy, I should say. So when we entered the consulting room, the doctor just heard me, mm -hmm. looked at him, you know, walking about in the consulting room and said, oh, there's nothing wrong with him. Okay. So he just prescribed vitamins for me that I should go and give it to him. I was so disappointed, but then let me try. Mm. But after a week, I could tell that he was now growing lean. Mm. And I could tell he was really feeling uncomfortable and most times in pain. So I went again and I was sent away that same way. So after about three weeks as a parent, I knew that something was wrong. So um, I had to let my husband find out from his friends who are doctors to see if something can be done again. And luckily he found a friend and said we should go and do a particular urine test. It was there that we found that it means that every urine he passes every day had some amount of blood, blood in it. So with that result, then we had to then take up further investigation. And so we went to the hospital and then they said one kidney was swollen. And if the kidney is swollen, it means that he has to go through a particular diagnosis where they put the child in a certain machine and then they get the exact thing, what's happening. I think that was when MRI had come mm. into Ghana. Mm. And before they put the child in the machine, there's this mixture the child has to take. And that morning, my husband took my son and I dropped the older one in mm. school and came back to meet him. When I came, he was at his wit's end because he couldn't get my son to drink oh. the medicine. So eventually, the the scan proved that yes, he had Wilms tumor. What, what Wilms tumor? Wilms. Wilms. It's a. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So then an operation had to be done. Mm. So they did the operation, and for me, I thought that was the end. You know, no matter how bad and the situation was, I thought it was the end. Until we had to report for a review. And I was given a letter to take to Kolibu. And I didn't know whatever was in was the in letter. letter. So I remember I get to Kolibu and I sit in front of the doctor. Then she calls her in another doctor. Then they begin to communicate. No matter how inquisitive I was, I never got to hear what they were saying. But they, <laughs> they were just assessing something and then I had stage two. So I was like, oh, what's stage So they told you? No, they didn't tell me. I no. overheard them. Okay. Then later, it was difficult for the doctor to break the news to me. But they told you eventually? They told That me. he was now suffering from what? Worms tumor, okay. which is um, cancer of the kidney. Okay. Mm. Interesting. And because they've taken it out, he has to go through chemotherapy. Okay. Trust you me, I don't know what happened to me after I got the news. Mm. Till today, that part of my life is missing. Okay. I don't know how I drove from Kolibu to my house. Mm. And it's been years now. Okay. So it's mm. not an easy thing mm. to go through mm. as a parent. Okay. Now, to, to you, Dr. Ado, um, how widespread is this incident of childhood cancer? Childhood cancers worldwide, um, yearly we get an estimated number of about 300,000 kids worldwide getting childhood cancers. And 80% um, of this number is actually found in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, where we don't have a lot of things. Okay, so um, in Ghana we're estimated to have um, about one, about 1,200 cases a year, but we get very few cases because of the awareness of um, these cancers. They are, um, people do not know the science. We get 1,002 of childhood we cancers. We are expected okay. to get, okay. depending on the numbers okay. that are generated okay. worldwide. Mm -hmm. But we don't get that okay. 
the, those, the numbers that come to the hospital are, are less than that, about 500 or so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, because that's why we're doing this education, and because uh, people miss the signs, both clinicians and, and, and families. Mm -hmm. And so as we continue with this education, people will be more alert, mm -hmm. okay, because it can happen to anybody. Okay, it's, that is not like um, it's special cases for special groups. It doesn't know the poor. It doesn't know the rich. So what should I see to draw my attention to the fact that maybe that's what is happening? Okay, so there are different types of cancers. Mm. And when you say cancer, it's an abnormal growth of cells anywhere in the body. It comes from your head to toe, mm. including the blood. So it can be your eye, your skin, your kidney, your liver wherever, okay, their cells, abnormal growth. Okay. So every um, part of the body and the different type of presentation they present. Mm -hmm. So there's an acronym that we have, Silhouette Sign, where the S um, talks about um, symptoms that have persisted. Like, you don't know whether the child is having fever, headache, fever, or going to the hospital. It's like, it's not going down. You should be a little uh, an alert. Okay. The eyes for eyes, eye signs. You know, sometimes you can take a picture of your child, and there's this white spot in the eye. Okay. Check it out. Okay. Most of the time, um, it could be, it could be a, a cancer of the eye. It could be something else apart from a cancer. But please check it out. Do not ignore it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You see your child's eyes are fine, then all of a sudden they are beginning to deviate. Mm. You know, or you see the eye getting swollen. You know, see an ophthalmologist. Okay. Somebody who can do it. And right. the L is lumps everywhere. Yeah. You see a lump on your body, please check it out. Okay. Okay. And then unexplained fever, you know, the child is tired, you know, pale, all of a sudden, please check it out. Okay. Yeah, the A, um, aches and pains in your body. It's like we say rheumatism. Sometimes somebody will say rheumatism, mm -hmm. okay? But aches and pains, check that one out. Sometimes mm -hmm. the cancer is in the bone. Okay, that can cause that. And then the N is like the child is having headaches, seizures, cannot, the gait has changed. The child is, is not working straight enough. It's just, you know, um, torturing left and right. Please mm -hmm. check it out. Okay. So these are some of the signs that mm -hmm. we are just putting out there. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure when we pick them up, we can prevent the spread of... Uh, yes, of yes. Pain. So okay. it's so important. Right. Okay. The, early, the earlier we... Mm -hmm find it the better because okay. when it spreads, that okay. is where the issue is. Okay, all right. Uh, let me go on to uh, Zoom briefly and speak to Setonam Kumado, who is a Leo, a member of the Accra Sankofa Club. Uh, Setonam, why is Leo focusing on childhood cancers? Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning, Leo. Um, I think that we are Leo and I'm a Leo. Um, the lion star, which is a youth brain of the lion star. And one of our pragmatic areas is to tackle on childhood cancer, which is relatively interesting and common in most children nowadays. And lion star is a humanitarian club, which also performs volunteering services. Every February and September has been set aside to embark on childhood cancer awareness. So in the month of September, we are, it is worldwide acknowledged as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And as Lions Club International, we are embarking on this awareness situation. We are educating the public and making them know that it is curable when it is early detected. So earlier the detection, the best way to solve the problem. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are just teaching people. Thank you, mm. thank you very thank much. You. I, I wish you all the best in this uh, journey, and, and whatever be the case, we will be there to support you. Now, Doc, um, so Mrs. was talking about the cost about treatment. How much w w does it take to take care of a child who's suffering from that, those cancers? Wow. So every cancer is different. Okay. Okay. Um, there are some treatments that take up to three years. Okay. There are some that take up to a year. There are some that are nine months. Okay, and so with every type of cancer, there's a specific budget that goes with it. Okay.
Okay. And um, uh, so I can't give one cost. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but can there be a rough figure? Yeah, you know, so maybe from uh, maybe from twenty thousand to fifty thousand. Okay. Uh, nice so this. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. But once you are here, you have your. How old is your son now? He's nineteen. Is he fully healed now? Yes, by the grace of God. Oh, and how 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 how, how are things now for him? It's okay. Mm. Today he's writing a paper, so I wish him well. <laughs> I'm sure he'll, he'll watch this later. He's, he's a survivor. Fine. Yes, he's, he's a survivor. survivor. Right. I think um, Ghana Parents Association, we call the survivors the brave ones mm. because they really go through a lot. Mm. Um, but as, as you're about to wrap, maybe you can add uh, an advice that you have as, a, as a, uh, a mother of a survivor. Any advice you have for parents who may be going through? Same. Yes, so as Doc described the the silent signs, anything that you don't... As mothers, there's something called instincts that we have. If something is wrong, if you are not even told, you, you have it, you know it, don't be afraid to check it out. But the thing I would want to emphasize is don't be afraid to check out from a different doctor, seek, seek help. If you go to one place and... Uh, reception, diagnosis, and everything that was done for you there, it's not satisfactory. Don't be afraid. Get to another doctor. Okay. Get to another doctor. Otherwise, something serious can be mistaken mm. for even malaria. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you very much. So that's uh, Mrs. Marian Opoko. She is a mother of a childhood cancer survivor who is 19 years old now and writing Wasi today. Dr. Yvonne Addo is a pediatrician. She is a pediatric oncologist in training at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. So that's it. What I took from this is that be vigilant as a parent and take charge of the health of your kid and things will be fine. So we will. Um, so Leo, um, we, are, we are grateful that you could join us. But uh, so what are any activity lined up? Yes. So um, the Lion Club District 1 is Ghana is embarking on Child Cancer Awareness Creation. So God willing, 17th of September, we'll be in a coupon to create awareness. So some will also be in mass day. There will be a health walk where people would also create awareness and educate the public on childhood cancer. And on 24th of September, we would go to go in the Volta region. There will be health screening and we would educate the people there too about childhood cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. Our information is, they should be panic. The moment you detect any sign, like anything your child complains about consistently, just visit the doctor okay. and then proper diagnosis. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Setonam Kumado is a member of the Leo Sankofa Club there. And that's how uh, we take this break. We'll be back with Business Day with us here on this desk. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Osifri Akutu, has insisted that government's flagship program, Planting for Food and Jobs, has yielded its intended targets. His assertion comes after the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana criticized some aspects of the implementation of the program, blaming it for the high prices of food staff. But addressing the issue, Dr. Akutu maintained that the increase in production of basic food staff shows the program is a success. Here's more in this report. The Science and Partnerships for Agriculture Conference in Africa, organized by the Forum for Agricultural Research, seeks to address key issues in Africa's agricultural sector with a focus on climate change technology and innovation. Speaking at the conference, Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Usufri Akutu said, although the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative is 40% below the estimated potential, the program has met expectations. The Planting for Food and Jobs programs have achieved major agricultural advances in Ghana. Comparing yield levels of maize, rice, and soya with those before the start of the PFJ program in 2016, demonstrate striking results. Maize production increased from 1.72 million metric tons to 3.58 million, sorry, 1.72 million metric tons to 3.58 million metric tons, representing an increase of over 100%. 
the rise from uh, rise from 687,000 to over a million metric tons, that's over 56 percent. So we are from 143,000 to 221,000, representing an increase of 55 percent. It is however important to state that these yields are still 40 percent below the estimated potential. The central theme for this year's Science and Partnerships for Agriculture Conference is introspection on climate smart agriculture action to strengthen accountability, resource use and impact in Africa. Touching on the theme, Assistant Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, Dr. Abebe Haile Gabriel, revealed that his outfit is implementing two new strategies to ensure that the sustainable development goals are achieved within the stipulated time. A few strategic framework that will guide our work in the next 10 years aims to support member states in their efforts to deal with climate change adaptation and mitigation in agri-food systems. The framework is encapsulated in FAO's four aspirations or four betters, namely better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life, leaving no one behind. In this respect, two new FAO strategies are particularly relevant for the deliberations on climate smart agriculture during this week. The first is the strategy on climate change. The second is the science and innovation strategy that aims to strengthen the use of science and innovation in FAO's technical interventions and normative guidance, including on climate action. Chairperson of the Board of Directors of the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, Dr. Elion Fall, believes that forming partnerships is vital in addressing challenges on the continent. It is obvious that the current challenges need international partnership and collaboration. We have explored this through the South-South, the North-South, and the North-South-South, the collaboration of the European Union Commission. In this regard, is very important and enormous, as well as all the development partners such as the USAID, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Australian Aid, Danida, African Development Bank, IFAD, and other partners. All right, and that's your business update more news on our website, myjoanline.com forward slash business, including SEC, Yokoto, and Mask Faceless Individuals Behind Online Ponzi Schemes. Those stories there at myjoyonline.com. Up next, sports to stay tuned. All right, so welcome back from the break. Time for us to bring you sports, and Razak Musbao is in the studio. Hi, good morning, brother. Good morning, good morning, Grace. How are you? Uh, we're doing well, you're doing great. What's uh, on the table? It's Champions League football, <laughs> Champions League football. It okay. started on Tuesday, uh, some games came off yesterday, and uh, after Kudu's wonderful performance, despite their laws on Tuesday, yesterday, Graham Potter, you know who Graham Potter is? Yeah, 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 the it's, new Chelsea manager. Absolutely, yeah. he, he stood on the touchline for the, his first game uh, for Chelsea, mm -hmm. but after Chelsea took the lead, Salzburg showed them that, look, man, you just, you're just new, you're new in this territory, <laughs> completely new. And uh, they do that game one one, you know, mm. and uh, it was a, it was it was an interesting game actually because it was trying to see how the players were fair, mm. and uh, if you study the reaction of a lot of the uh, Chelsea fans, they appear to have some hope relative to how the coach wants to play, but there's still one problem, and that's the conversion of the goals, and mm. uh, that's still the problem. So. Yesterday, so, Sterling scored. So they don't have an out-and-out -out striker yet. They do. Aubameyang is there. Oh, yeah. Aubameyang is there. Yesterday, he played. You could tell that he still needs time to okay. adapt to how Chelsea plays. And even for the players, they, they need time to understand how the coach really wants them to play. And you could see yesterday, there were glimpses of how he wants them to play. But he needs time. And unfortunate for him, after this game, the next time he's going to uh, you know, get to manage any other game is in October. Because this weekend, Chelsea will not play. And after this weekend, there's going to be international break, after which the Premier League will return in October. And uh, so he has some time to do a bit of board, you know, dressing room analysis, but he will not have lots of the players okay. to do that work with them. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. But today's first day. Yeah. 
Uh, one of the biggest clubs in the world mm. is playing today, isn't mm. it? Well, if, Manchester if, United. I mean, yes, in terms of, <laughs> I mean, historically speaking, uh -huh. they are one of the biggest. <laughs> but, I mean, contemporarily speaking... We are fit on the table. You are fit on the table. That, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're, like, contemporarily one of the biggest, I think you should not be playing on Thursday. But, I mean, you have a game today against Serie Tiraspol. And why it's even interesting is because... The two Ghanaian players, in fact, three Ghanaian players okay. in that team. In Sharif? In Sharif. Whoa. There's one player called uh, Frank uh, is it Pogo. There's another, Razaka Balora. He's oh, going okay. to be in post. He's mm. former Kumasi Asante Kotoko Kumasi player. Oh, okay. And another former Kumasi Asante Kotoko player, Mudasiru Salifu, mm. is also there. So today, Razaka Balora will be in post when Cristiano Ronaldo will be playing. Oh, he's most likely going to all times. Oh, my days. Ah. He's, he's going to be in post. <laughs> Salifu Mudasiru is also going to play all formerly Kumasi Asante Kotoko players. So it's great for Ghanaian you know, representation. Mm. And we'll wait to see whether Abalora will do a Dauda Mohammed in 2014. Mm. You know, remember the other one? Oh, yeah, in 2014. <laughs> he caught the boy and threw it back to Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> but I think Abalora is going to do well. Anyway, do well. So we'll I pray he does. Uh, yeah, because yeah. of them, maybe, I don't know, I mean, I'll support the two teams today. Yeah. Okay, I'll pray my Manchester United win. Well, well, I think they're but not win. with a heavy margin. Well, because, I think they're going to win. Rosaka yeah, they're going to win. But Sherry's just walking pool surprise. Remember, they yeah, did they it did to, to Real Madrid. Madrid. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. to Real Madrid. Anyway, thank you, Razak. Yeah? You're welcome. And that's how we wrap up today's bulletin. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo. Please do enjoy the rest of our programs. Good morning.